Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel and today I'm going to be doing four little pictures on one piece of paper talking about practice so let's roll that intro let's see what happens Hey everybody, welcome back. As I said just now, I'm going to be doing four little studies on one piece of paper. Now, why am I doing that? Well, I've done videos very similar to this in the past where I've talked about practicing. And this is a little bit of the same. But the, the reasoning behind it is that recently some of my students, they have sort of done a beautiful drawing on a piece of paper, worked very, very hard on it, invested a lot of time. And for some reason, very sadly, not always thankfully, but it can go wrong in the painting stage. And it's not that they're bad painters. It just, it needs a little bit more practice or it needs a little bit more understanding. They may be tackling some trees that didn't work out. So they need to practice trees. It may be the sky that they're having problem with. They need to practice skies. Well, instead of investing a lot of paper, time and effort into bigger pieces, uh, on that and getting it wrong subdivide your paper up as many times as you want to I've done it in four today for you and the idea is to do little cameos little pieces but as paintings not just a little tree and that's the end of it do a whole landscape and do the whole thing as quickly as you can have a lot of fun think about aerial perspective and warms and cool colors and if sky is your issue do skies if trees are issues, make trees a feature of them. But if they go wrong, it doesn't matter. You go on to the next piece of the paper. You're still only on halfway through your one piece of paper. If you get the four done and they're all messed up, doesn't matter. But you've learned and you haven't taken so much time to do that learning. And you never know. One or two of those may be stonkers. So you haven't actually wasted the entire piece of paper at all. And what's more, they make lovely gifts. You can create these paintings. They're not taking too long. They can be really imaginative, imaginative, and they can be really exciting little paintings. And they make great gifts for your friends, your family, and your loved ones. And they really would appreciate having one of your originals, I'm sure. So there is a good purpose behind doing this as well. And it is also saving on product. You're not using so much paper, but you are creating some wonderful pieces. So in a sense, it's about practice. And that really is key. Taking something or just doing something. In other words, just paint landscapes for the fun of it, but you're learning all the time. Or indeed, if some particular thing like a tree, a building, animals, skies, doesn't matter what it is, if that's the problem for you overall when you are painting, then why don't you just do it? It could be flowers. You may have problems painting flowers. In other words, make several little paintings on a piece of paper of flowers, your favourite flowers. One of them may turn out great and you'll be glad that you did it. Anyway, I am going to make this a very, very long video before I even start painting. So let's get on. Catch you all at the other end. Now, as for the colour, let's get on because this is going to be a two hour video just talking about it without doing anything. So I wanted to take it one stage further. I am very into uh, gouache right now, as many of you are aware, but I also wanted to play around with my watercolours. So I'm going to combine both. So this is my gouache palette and this is my watercolour palette and I will list all the colors to both in the show more tab under this video so if you want to see what uh, colors that i'm using you'll be able to find out very very easily as for the brushes well i have my collection of brushes these have been edited down recently because i am taking both gouache and watercolors into the field with me so i want a selection of brushes that i use for gouache and those that i use for watercolor and I have a few things for ink as well. So that's what we're going to do. I am not going to be looking at sort of painting anything in particular. And recently I have done uh, two sheets of doing this. I've done eight pictures recently in my gallery when I had a bit of spare time. Well, in fact, that's not quite true. I did four in the gallery one afternoon when I was waiting to 
uh, clear up and finish off for the week. And then I did four more sitting in the car park in my camper van, Clarabel, while I was waiting for my wife to go and do the shopping. And I just sat and just painted four landscapes out of my head. That was it. It was practice and it was a lot of fun. Now I'm going to be using uh, these are three Etcher uh, brushes that I was recently sent from Etcher to use as part of a video I did recently and that was on the starter kit. If you want to look at that I'll list that up there for you to pop over and take a look at that one. But these are were or are intended as watercolour brushes but I think they make great gouache or watercolour. So I'm going to probably just be using these ones today and I may even just pop in with a small uh, watercolour brush like a rigger right at the end on one or two of them. So, okay so firstly then I as I say I, I have brought this up because I can't really show both of my palettes and this and make any sense of it so I've brought this up large so that you can see what I'm doing and I'll try as best I can to talk about the colors and many of the colors that I use I sort of stick with anyway so I'm going to paint a sky on the first one I'm probably going to use very much the same colors on all of the skies that I use in this little video so to begin with I'm mixing up quite a large amount of cobalt blue in watercolor and I'm going to do a very weak, very watery solution of raw sienna. I love this color as a sky base, making it quite weak. So I'm just going to pop on here and just going to put a few dashes, maybe a little stronger color in one or two areas like that. And we have the beginnings of a sky. In my head, I've already decided where I want the horizon line to be, somewhere quite low like that. All right, so let's rinse that brush very quickly. Let's come back in. Let's pop in some nice blue. No. Uh, an amalgam of several colors. It's primarily like a, a sap or a leaf green with a bit of lemon in it. And I think that just makes a very simple landscape base. We haven't got to put too much more in, but I will do. I'm going to come back. I'm going to put a little bit of magenta using gouache again and a little bit of cobalt blue. And there's a little bit of greeny color, making a bit of a dull gray. So let's just push that in like that. And let's just put in a few hills, maybe something in the background there. And so you don't have to overthink this. This is merely me having a bit of fun and enjoying myself and just seeing what I can do as little landscapes to make it rather interesting. The reason I do like to put a little bit of yellow or a little bit of sienna or something into my cloud forms, it just sort of brightens them up, makes them a little sparkly over just leaving the white paper. I'm going to bring the horizon line quite high this time, above halfway. It either needs to be below or above halfway, never directly through the center. This is nice and strong as a gouache, but I can weaken that off anytime I want to. I'm going to come across now and put a little bit of lemon yellow, just lighting up a little track of light through the back there in my landscape like that. Just playing around with what you're seeing visually. There we go. We've got a nice little light through there. We can increase that later on if we want to. And I'm going to come back down. I'm going to put a bit more grunge into this color. So we're just mixing up in a little bit of layer and I'm dry brushing across and just creating lots of little bits of interest in the landscape. And I'm going to come in and this is pretty much, got to say, all gouache, this one. Just playing around. 
enjoying myself. And that's all it is. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the watercolor. I'm gonna add in some yellow ochre this time instead of sienna. There is a little bit of sienna running around in it, but it's quite a weak suggestion. And I'm just gonna put in a little bit more for another sky. Not so much this time, like that. And I'm gonna make this sky with a high horizon line. Somewhere like that. I think I'm gonna leave it there. Okay, I'm gonna put that blue in as I did before, like so. Just let it track and go wherever it wants to go. And my clouds are being formed automatically because of what I'm doing. The yellow is less orange than this one. This is raw sienna. It's got a little bit more of a warmth to it. This is slightly cooler in these clouds. Now the thing you've noticed about all of these clouds that I'm doing, I haven't actually gone back and worked into any of them. And I might well do on one of them, I might put a bit of color involved. I might do that on the last one, but I don't try and work into them once they've done. Now I have done in the past and it will cost you. Okay, try if you can to come in, work the area, and then leave it alone. So we've got another sky going. Now I could carry on with this. I'm gonna think about that for a little while. I'm gonna come back to it. So I'm gonna come into this one. And I said to you that I was going to uh, put in another sky, but I'm gonna put some color and cloud and some darker cloud into it. Now, so far I've been using the flat. So we're gonna come back to a large round. This one is a number 12 from Etcher. And I don't think that you can buy these brushes outside of the um, starter kit. So, but I do know that uh, Jackson's have it on order, uh, sorry, on order, on offer right now, I believe. Uh, so if you wanted to get one slightly cheaper, I think the whole kit uh, is about 26 or 30 quid. And I think that you get a whole lot for your money in that. But I will put an affiliate link under the Show More tab. If you want to get one or have a look at it, please pop over there and just use that affiliate. And it does help me out as well. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. All of this is taking no time at all. It's just me having fun. I can't keep saying that enough. Now, one thing you've got to understand is my paper is elevated to about 30 degrees, something like that. And then I'm gonna mix up a little bit more of my blue. And in fact, what I will do is I'm gonna use some cobalt blue gouache this time, like so. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come in with a little bit of um, neutral tint. And this is the Schmincke one in watercolor. I'm just gonna pop that into one or two areas to form the bases of some of these cloud forms like that. Now, Okay, so let's just quickly come back and we're gonna do some more to these. They're by no means finished at all. I'm gonna come in with um, some watercolor. I'm gonna use some lavender. It's a new color for me, just getting into it. It's a Daniel Smith's color, loving it. Gotta say, it's a whole heap of fun and it's opening up some beautiful color um, ideas for me. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna put that lovely lavender through here as a distant set of hills. My hills locally, these are the downs that border the Romney Marshes, and that is my group of hills there. Simply put in. Okay, to that then, I am going to come in and I'm gonna put some gouache. I'm gonna come back in with that green I was using earlier. Now it has got a little bit of white into it, but essentially we're good. And it's just a nice crisp green color. And that just is very similar to this one, just bordering our hills. And we're gonna to add to that, it's not finished, but I'm gonna bring that down. I want to freshen it up. Now spring is in the air 
and it's nice just to come in with that lovely, beautiful, limey green, fresh green of grasses and fields that we see this time of year. Just dropping that in place like that. And I drop it down so far, let it tail off into the white paper. Then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to be using some of that same green, but this time with a bit more blue, a little bit of cobalt in that, and that's going to cool that off. And now we've got a different color field running through the base here. Um, what do I want to do with this one? I think I quite like the idea of maybe not doing land at all. Let's just bring that down a little more. So I'm going to come back very, very quickly. So I'm going to pop in a little, well, that's too strong. So take the color out, lose it, just run that down there like that, and just stop. Now I'm going to put some more color over there. I just want to tap that off because that does constitute an issue if I'm not careful. There we are. And I'm going to bring that down a little there, just a bit more blue into some of that underneath that cloud bank. So now we've created that little bit of, as a cloud bank through there. This is watercolor. This is some cobalt blue mixed with a little bit of yellow and whatever was in the brush. Now we're going to bring that down. That is getting a little too central. So what I might do, let that dry, and I want to put a seascape in there. I'm going to do that just for the last picture. So let's come back and look at these ones very quickly. You're going to need to put in a bit of gouache now, and I'm going to come in with a little bit of hill detail. So I'm going to put in a few areas here on the tops of our hills. There's Let's come in and I can use some watercolor. I'm going to use a bit of Payne's Gray watercolor. And I can mix that down with any of the gouache paintings. So let's do that. Let's come in with a bit of Sienna and a little bit of the Payne's Gray. And because I'm using these sort of hybrid brushes, I can get away with what I'm doing. I put a little bit of uh, the gouache green in there as well. I just wanted to make something that could be a little bit of a shady side to some of these trees back here. Red and green are complementary, so they will work together like this. Start to cancel each other out and create a bit of a grey. A colour grey, colorimetric grey. And so I'm creating more interest that way. Come back in with a little bit more blue. I just wanted a bit of a very dark colored violet color through there. That's what I wanted. So that's almost like a, um, a bit like an indigo in a way, but it's not. It's, it's a hybrid, it's alizarin, it's cobalt, and it's a bit of the sienna as well. Now you can see my taps are fairly simple. And I'm just putting in or sort of anything really, but hopefully it's suggesting something to you, the viewer. So let's look at what we're going to do for our hills here. Now for this one, I am going to come back in and I'm not going to use gouache. I'm going to be using some um, cobalt blue in watercolor. And I'm going to tap into that a little bit of um, Venetian red. Makes a bit dirtier, but it's not going to be too dark because I want to have a subtle part of the trees. Now, these are the hill forms. And if you want to go down to a smaller brush, this is a number six, and it will do slightly finer marks for you. 
I'm going to come in here with a little bit of blue violet too. I just want to play around with the forms and structures on this hill. Now I'm So I'm going to go back to the flat brush now. And it's a lovely little flat brush, great for gouache, as well as watercolour. And I want to put in a very simple line of the horizon line. I want to keep it quite cool. And I'm putting a little bit of lavender through there as the horizon to my sea, but no hills in it. Eh? Let's just do that again, come through here. What we do like to have is a nice straight horizon line. And I'm using the flat edge. This is what I wanted to use the flat brush for. I'm leaving out little areas here that are going to be the tops of waves. The nice shape on the brush will allow me to mess around and create some areas, some taps down, and leave areas that are void of paint and add paint. It just depends how I use that brush. Just making some of that go into some of the sea there. I'm going to play around with that in a moment once it's dry. But now let's get to this one. And let's try and start bringing all these pictures to a finish. So here I'm going to go back to the smaller round brush. And I want to come in with some darker green colours. Stronger greens. But darker ones. And I'm going to come in here with some bushes. Well, that's first off, we're going to put in a couple of larger dark trees, really heavy marsh bushes and trees. And I'm going to leave a little bit of white around some of them like this to suggest buildings. quickly put together, doesn't mean too much, I'm going to come in and I'm going to put in a few old posts that are sort of fences, broken old fences. And I'm going to use the rigger in this one in a moment, I think, just to finish it off. That's pretty much sorted that one. Okay, let's come back to our seascape very, very quickly. 
and there's not a lot I really want to do with it. I just want to come in with a little bit of watercolour, a little bit of um, lovely turquoise green, beautiful colour. Cobalt turquoise, lovely green, little bit of yellow ochre to that. Just want to come in and pop in, come back to that flat brush as I was using earlier. Just want to put in a little bit of shadow under some of these little waves. They're not heavy waves, we're not painting stormy skies and seas. We're just painting a few little representative token gestures of shadow as the white water curls over and creates that little um, wave as it were. Okay, so we have got a little sort of rivulet coming in to or ebbing out to the tide to meet it or catch up with it, whichever, uh, depending on what the tide is doing, out or in. There we are. Okay, that's all we need to do with that one. That's done. We're going to put a couple of goals in it, but that's all we need to do. Coming very, very quickly back, picking up a little bit of white gouache with the small brush little bit of neat gouache on the end of our brush and I'm just going to pop in here a little bit more solid than that. Now gouache does have the tendency that uh, white does tend to not have a lot of power unless it's fairly neat. There we are. Now we've got some sheep in our field. Just look and think the way sheep look end on, side on, two or three together but now we have got a whole load of sheep in our field. Come back, replenish your brush, don't rely on it lasting that long. Nice and thick. Sheep, we've got sheep in our field, done, sorted. Okay, that's sorted, that's sorted I think, I'm not gonna do any more. All I want to do is come in with a little bit of dark paint and I'm gonna use a bit of Payne's Gray, little bit of Sienna in watercolor I'm just going to finish this off by quickly putting in a few birds. I love putting birds in. It just gives that little bit of life to our scene. Try and keep them odd numbers. There's something about even numbers that just doesn't work. Here we can have a couple of seagulls, quite low maybe. Let's put them in. Let's put them in here. I'm going to make them a little bit whiter in a moment. I'm going to put a bit of white to them. Three seagulls, all it needs going through there. A little bit more, a little darker, maybe a little more sepia to that. And then we're going to put in a whole load of crows. But they are a long way off. So they're just flying in the way that they do. Crows could be jackdaws. We've got a lot of jackdaws here. And they go in sways, loads of them. Every morning when I go out to walk the dog towards the end of our road, uh, often if I catch it at the right time, we get hundreds, and I do mean hundreds, probably thousands, and they're just all over the place. They really are such a splendid sight to see them. I love them, catching them, catching sight of them in the mornings. I'm just tapping. Your brain's telling me they're birds, but they could be anything. They're just taps of paint, nothing more. There we go. Okay. <laughs> they do look like taps of paint, but there you go. You get the idea. Am I going to put, I might as well put birds in this one as well. Why not? There we go. Let's put a few birds in there. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I had a lot of fun doing it and I always enjoy 
playing around with ideas like this where you're creating little cameos. Some of these will go into my shop in Hythe, in my gallery. Others will be given to friends and family as little keepsakes and they do appreciate that. And uh, so it's really well worth doing these little exercises. And don't just do four and forget it. Keep on doing it. Keep on playing around with these little ideas and having a lot of fun. And you'll be amazed how much your learning comes on leaps and bounds. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, as always, I'm going to ask you to give it a thumbs up, give it a like. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to the channel. Now, you may well have noticed that the channel name has changed a couple of times. There is a reason for that, and I'll tell you that in a very future, uh, a, a future video very, very soon. But it has changed. It's now going to settle down. It's Paul's Watercolor Studio. So I hope you'll join me uh, on future videos from the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to the channel and click that bell and notification tab tells you every time I upload a new video. Okay, so before I wrap this up, just to mention that I have got a Patreon. And if you want to take a look at that, there is an awful lot of exclusive content on there. It's growing all the time. There are lots of different tiers and structures to get involved with. And if you fancy that, I'd love to welcome you on board as my latest Patreon. And don't forget that Sky course and the details of that in the show more under here. As I said earlier, there are a few spaces left at £67. Save yourself £30, get seven hours plus of tutorial content, and I'd love to help you out on the other side of that one too. In the meantime, I'm going to get ready for a new video. I'm going to wish each and every one of you happy painting. Stay safe wherever you are. Take care until next time. Bye-bye.